Joe Biden brought diversity to big oil. So why won't Gen Z show him love? What striking workers get wrong about the mental health of CEOs? How defunding the military could create a super China? This Harvard scientist says the solution to climate change is a giant gas-powered air conditioner. NYPD under fire after man struck by bullet-like object from police-affiliated weapon. New study confirms that public school graduates underperform in wealth portfolio management. This mayor just ended ended homelessness in her hometown. Here's why she should smile more. I'm gonna simplify this as much as I can. Some lesbians have buzz cuts. Some lesbians have beards. Some lesbians use he, him pronouns. Some lesbians bind. Some lesbians get top surgery. Some lesbians take HRT. Some lesbians have bulges. Some lesbians tuck. Some lesbians do drag. Some lesbians don't have a genital preference. As long as they say so, they're still a lesbian. And if you think that you have the authority to tell them that they're not, how are you any different from the cis men who say that they just need to sleep with the right man to not be a lesbian anymore? Food for thought. I think you're fat. Yeah. That's it's a- just my opinion. <laughs> I'm not bullying that's you. True, I'm just yeah. giving you a opinion. I think you're ugly. I think you're fat. I think you're stupid. Boss, we learned out who the mole is. It's polyamorous Tony. There, ref, fuck. I want him dead. I want his wife dead. I want his wife dead. I want his wife dead. I want his wife. But the fact that you have able bodied women sitting in wheelchairs to do a fashion show when they're clearly able to walk. Mm-mm-mm. Not on my watch. She's talking about this disabled woman here. <laughs> Now I know we just went through this, but let's look at the definition of an ambulatory wheelchair user. People who have a disability or chronic illness and use a wheelchair, though they may have some capacity to walk. In other words, we don't need the wheelchair 24 seven, but we do in fact still need it. There are people in your comment section telling you that you're wrong and your response is, it was not me questioning whether or not the woman in the video was in fact disabled. But the fact that you have able bodied women sitting in wheelchairs to do a fashion show when they're clearly able to walk do you have short-term memory? And then you wanna gaslight us and say, well, I'm disabled too. I have an invisible disability. Oh yeah, you're disabled too, that makes it better. And it totally gives you the right to call another disabled woman able body. How would you feel if someone made a video saying invisible disabilities aren't a real disability? And if you say you wouldn't care, then that means that you don't care about your own community. And that's sad. The only way for people to find out is if they ask questions. The problem is you didn't ask a question. You straight up said that this woman was able bodied because you saw her get up and walk. How ignorant. But you wanna know what's even more ignorant? You won't delete the video, further perpetuating this idea that if you're in a wheelchair but you can walk, that you're faking. And her reason is, well, I reached out to the person and she hasn't responded. So until she responds and tells me that she wants me to delete the video, I'm gonna keep the video up. What? Do you know how TikTok DMs work? You're not friends. Your message is gonna go straight to message requests and this lady has 40,000 followers on TikTok. Do you really think she's gonna see your message? I just want you to know that this is so irresponsible of you. Do you know how many people are gonna come across that video and think, oh yeah, man, she was in a wheelchair, but then she got up and walked, so she's not disabled, yeah and you don't care? The reason I'm so passionate about this is because I'm an ambulatory wheelchair user myself. And these type of videos are the reasons why we get accused of faking it. And you're gonna keep the video up and you think you're still a good person? My video was not made out of malice. Your intent may not have been malicious, but it turns into maliciousness when you know that you're wrong and you still won't delete the video. And your excuse is that you haven't gotten a response from the model. How she feels is all that matters. Oh yeah. Forget all of us other ambulatory wheelchair users that you're affecting. And for some reason she keeps saying, but I'm not talking about the model. I'm trying to question Victoria's Secret. What does that even matter? Victoria's Secret is doing just fine. We need this type of representation so we can teach people like you and not everyone needs a wheelchair 24 seven. We're tired of being harassed. We're tired of being told we're faking. We're tired of being caught lazy and you are contributing to that. Congratulations. <laughs> and when you told me that I'm free to DM you, <laughs> yeah, you wish it was a DM. Now why y'all worry about the fuck I do? I'ma let y'all know when the fuck I'm through. Like, they like the way I grind. They like the way I flirt. They like the way
teaching my friend JJ how to throat sing. All you have to do is repeat after me. Okay. Right. I'll jump in, and usually we hold each other to keep the rhythm. Okay. <laughs> well, there needs to be more conversation about how white dominated transgender spaces and representation is. And this is problematic because expectations of what passing means and transgender narratives become rooted in Eurocentric beauty standards and westernized ideals of what masculinity or femininity means. And this means that the experiences of people of color get left out. For example, transitioning for trans men often implies this gaining of white male privilege. But for trans mass people of color, it means we have to confront new types of racism that I don't get here talked about in transitioning stories. When black and brown trans mass people transition, they're encountering new bigotries of being pursued as a threat. And when Asian trans mass people transition, we have an extra added layer of being infantilized and emasculized by society. So this doesn't mean we're gaining any sort of male privilege in the white male privilege sense, but we're gonna be encountering new types of discrimination and racism that you don't really hear about. And you don't really hear about them because the experiences of people of color are so pushed off to the side. Another example, Eurocentric beauty standards. Passing tips always tend to be from white trans men. This lack of diversity and representation for people of color in trans spaces means that everyone's transition goals kind of just center around whiteness, around this skinny white boy ideal. And people of color will never be able to live up to the white standard that's set for trans people. One of the biggest problems in America right now is We are live! Once again with America's favorite game show, Finish That Douchebag's Phrase! I'm your host, Chad Almanac, and this week's guest is looking for redemption after a tough loss last week. Everybody, welcome back. Jason, how you been, Jason? I'm doing great, Chad. I'm just ready to get back in the winner's column. Well, I'm rooting for you, buddy. Now, as always, I'm gonna show Jason a video clip of a douchebag, and he just has to tell me how it ends. Are you ready, Jason? I'm ready, Chad. Let's do it. Okay, let's roll the clip. One of the biggest problems in America right now is Okay, so it appears to be the same guy from last time, Jason. Maybe that'll give you some sort of edge. What, what are you thinking? I think I've already got the answer, Chad. He's a conservative, so I think he's going to say people in the LGBTQ community. Okay, Jason has locked in his answer. Make sure to pause and place your guesses below. Now let's see if he's right. One of the biggest problems in America right now is black privilege. Chet, we're still live. So, um, Jace, Jason, I am so sorry. Jason? Yeah, let's go ahead and get Jason some help. And just like that, we are out of time. As always, I'm your host, Chad Almanac. We finished that douchebag's phrase, and I don't, I, I don't know what we just watched. I'm so, I'm so sorry. 97% of rapists will not spend a single day in jail. That is a real statistic. How does society, how do we fix this? How do we stop this happening? It has to involve us. And by us, I mean men. Now to the women in the room, I know you know this. None of this is new information to you. You've lived your life, you've got your experiences, and your voices are more important and necessary in this discussion than mine. That being said, I would still like to lend my voice to the discussion. And to the men in the room, I want to make something crystal clear. This isn't an attack. I'm not accusing you of anything. I knew this man for eight years and he fucking did it. There are monsters amongst us and they look like us. If you are sick of the narrative that is currently going on about men, feel free to change it, but you have to get involved. Don't make the same mistake I did for years, which was just sitting back and be like, well, I'm not part of the problem, therefore I must be part of the solution, because that's just not how this fucking shit works. I believe, and deep down I know that most men are good, of course we are, but when one in ten men are shit and the other nine do nothing, they might as well not fucking be there. You have to actively be good and get involved. Instead of having this fucking hero complex of being like, I'm gonna beat up a rapist, fucking prevent one, stop one, because I know it can be done because I know how I fucking failed at it. Talk to your fucking boys. When I heard they were making a documentary about the Russell Brand allegations, my first thought was very cynical. I thought, why are they sensationalizing this with a documentary? Shouldn't this be a legal issue? Then I realized I sound like an asshole, because it is a legal issue, and they are encouraging victims to come forward. Not even mentioning how police and the legal system are a complete joke when it comes to situations like this. But then I thought more and I realized, 
It's really unfortunate that when it comes to high-profile cases like this, it almost needs to become a spectacle for anything to be done. Like, we all know that we live with these systems that not only allow these men to take advantage of their positions, but protect them when anyone tries to speak out. Like, we know this. But it's almost like every time this happens, it has to be this big cultural milestone that we collectively get through just to realize, again, that this isn't just some abstract evil idea. There are actual victims because of this. And it makes you wonder, why is there such a united front against it? Why is this culture war just people who want things to improve and people who don't think there's a problem at all, you're just being ridiculous, it's all a big witch hunt? Like, obviously, when these people like Russell Brands have these platforms, they can leverage their fans to rush to their defense. But how is it that these fan bases are so drawn to these kinds of figures and so readily dismiss this stuff? Basically, what the fuck is going on with conservatives? Anyone who makes any kind of social commentary online knows that the state of discourse is so completely fucked that you have to tiptoe around every little word you say or else little reactionary conservatives will completely shut down and stop listening. They're literally like trigger words. You can't say systemic. You can't say misogyny. God forbid you say rape culture. Their brains will instantly shut down and they'll be like, Oh, shut the fuck up, SJW, fucking snowflake. Like, without fail. It's ridiculous. Even if it's blatantly staring you in the face, this is a learning opportunity. They won't have it. I fucking watched 16 Candles the other day. That shit was atrocious. I, like, had to go online and be like, uh, that was really fucked up, right? And, like, clockwork. You have the people that want to actually question what the fuck kind of culture would produce something like this, and the fucking brain-dead anti-woke crowd that's like, oh, it was a different time, back before you SJWs took over everything and we could laugh. Like, it's funny for one second. Like, oh my god, Andrew Tate stands, am I right? Oh, Elon Musk stands, am I right? But eventually it's just like, fuck, what is wrong with you? And I know there's probably a lot of literature about this and it would be very enlightening. But for every fucking thousand books, there's one dickhead posting clips of his stupid ass podcast on TikTok. And then that shit gets spread to fucking YouTube shorts. And then your little brother is watching it on his iPhone. And your cousin is watching it on his phone. And what the fuck do you do? What the fuck do you do? A day in the life of a disabled college student. First, I have to get my wheelchair out of my car. Get your ass up out of there. Bring your way. You got it. Is you okay? Is you okay? Is you okay? Is you okay? Hold on. Is you okay? Hold on. See how easy that was? And then we have to open it up. Lock it in the place. And I got ticket, boy. And I hope you don't give me a ticket because I'm not supposed to be parked right here. About everything else is parked. As fucking I cannot do it. All right, now the wheelchair is ready to go. Uh, this parking lot is not accessible at all. I'm about to move these cones. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Oops. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I have to go down here. Um, I mean, if you want, you, I'm just trying to push this down to the sidewalk. I gotta hold on, yeah. Thanks so much. I know, I'm saying. Alrighty. There you go. Thank you so much for your help. I appreciate it. My first class is in this dusty ass science building. It's dusty as fuck up in here. That's why I changed my major from biology to uh, marketing. No, it's not the it's not the main reason or the only reason, but it's one of the reasons I can't learn in no dusty ass environment. When y'all see the business building, y'all gonna be like, oh yeah, <laughs> this shit is dusty, bitch. I was surprised they had an elevator in this dusty motherfucker. And then them beeps on this wheelchair. I might as well be like, hey guys, I'm disabled. I'm in a wheelchair. Do you hear me? Do you see me? Can you get out of my way, please? Like, I might as well just do that. It's so loud, and I don't know how to turn it down. This, I'll be having to kick it open because they don't have a, a thing. Uh. 
how hard would it have been for her to just hold the door open? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. One door open, the other one didn't, typical. So now I have to... Uh, uh. Oh, thank you so much. No problem, man. I you appreciate it. Doors. They do. I'm gonna go talk to them about it. Yeah. You need to oh, oh, oh. If you hit that button, it'll open. That one will open. You thank you so much. No Isn't that other building dusty as fuck compared to this? Okay. Uh, aren't you in my, one of my classes? Yeah. Now I have to go back to my car, which is really, really far. No ticket. Fantastic. I love you, ticket boy. Or should I call you no ticket boy? This is actually really hard. It makes me really sad. I gotta move my car because I can't get my wheelchair in. It's shit popping off my wheelchair and shit. Huh. Whatever, bro. All right, now, part two. I mean, attempt two. I got it in there. This fucking popped up. Fuck! And I'm about to pee on myself. Nah, -uh, you gonna close. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna close. As you can see, the accessibility is not super great. Some of the doors don't open. Parking is fucking ass. There aren't enough shortcuts to get places, so it takes super long to get anywhere. This is the life of being disabled. We live in a world where accommodations aren't really made for us, and if they are, it's just a little, here you go, here, just take that. We did that, now take that, and you just be grateful for that. And if the world would become more adaptive and accessible, we wouldn't feel as disabled. Disabled people are oftentimes a second thought, they just aren't taken into consideration with the things we have to deal with sometimes. But I am excited to let you guys know I made some great connections when I went to San Antonio and I will be at Accessibility Fest. It's in San Antonio on October 7th at 9 a.m. So if you can come out, it would be great. Here's some information. You can pause the screen and read that. And I'll be promoting it more up to the event. There's going to be live music, performances, activity, information, products, programs, and services that promote independence and inclusion. This festival is made possible by the nonprofit called Disability SA in San Antonio. So check them out, their tag. And if you struggle with incontinence, which is not being able to to control your bladder or bowel movement. They are gonna be having changing stations, which is awesome. There's also gonna be ASL interpreters, wheelchair charging stations, adaptive tools for crafting out activities and so much more. So I would love to see so many people there, even if you're able-bodied and you can come out to San Antonio, October 7th, starts at 9 a.m. It will really mean a lot to me. You could use as much support as possible. So thank you Disability SA for this opportunity. Hi, Benji here. Do you know that the phrase mumbo jumbo has racist origins? Mumbo jumbo is commonly understood today to describe something meaningless, confusing, and nonsensical. But the term comes from the word mama jumbo in the 18th century. And the Mandinka people, a large West African ethnic group. Mama jumbo is a revered figure, portrayed by a masked dancer in their cultural ceremonies and rituals. In 1738, British travel writer Francis Moore wrote about mama jumbo. In his book, Travels into to the inland parts of Africa, but he incorrectly spelled the name as Mambo Jumbo. Moore found Mambo Jumbo grotesque and the rituals of the Mandinka people to be confusing nonsense. This perception then spread across the Western world. And over time, Mambo Jumbo began to be used to describe things people found to be confusing, different or deemed to be uncivilized. So mumbo jumbo essentially comes from white people dismissing something as nonsensical because it doesn't come from white people and they can't relate to or understand it. And while the phrase can arguably be used today in a benign way, there's still a useful lesson in inclusion to be learned from its origins. Before dismissing something you don't understand as mumbo jumbo, ask yourself, is it actually nonsensical and meaningless? Or have I just not made enough of an effort to interpret it from a point of view and cultural lens that isn't my own? Hope that helps. Bye.
like a gothy girl. Local man injured after conflict with NYPD car. Wildfires break out after clash between protesters and wildfire company. The NYPD just spent $20 million on a new surveillance dog. We named her Scout. Meet the genocidal dictator who's changing music for the better. Why building more housing won't increase the amount of housing. These parents were reported for locking their kids in the car for 19 days. Was the school right to act? op -ed. I was treated poorly. Here's why others should be treated the same way. Why more cars could equal a greener future. We asked ChatGPT for its thoughts on gay marriage. Here's why you shouldn't ignore its response. Hey, bitch, I miss you. Keep being queer, keep being you, because you are literally the fucking best thing to ever exist, and I don't know why you're always fucking doubting yourself. Like, literally shut the fuck up. Like, that shit's ugly. Don't be that. Mm. We're gonna need all available units for backup. There's a candlelit vigil going on and they just pulled out some saxophone. This city makes me sick. Good thing I don't live here though. The new guy? Caught him beating up the umpire at his son's baseball game. Gave him a gun on the spot. Why well, wear this badge? Because at home, I have a wife and kids who are terrified of me. It's the most dangerous night of the year. So we're all gonna hang out on the same street corner and play on our phones. Think I do this because I want to? <sighs> I have to. It's the only job you can do with 10 DUIs. Grab the riot gear, men. There's a parade of nine incels downtown and they need our help. Raiding the bake sale at the orphanage? Piece of cake. We do it so that you can sleep at night and homeless people cannot. You did the right thing. There's no way you could have known that woman was telling the truth. When you're on duty, you put public safety above all else, except for uh, your safety and your convenience. That's okay. I have a wife that loves me like a woman. Do you have anyone that loves you? This is the most important mission you'll ever have. There's a group building free housing in Madagascar. We're not gonna do it for ourselves. We're doing it for the people back at home working at oil companies. We did it, boys. We permanently contaminated a natural water resource. Pat on the back. Kowalski? He's our best man. Just last week, he burned down a house trying to free some hostages who didn't exist. Now, do you even think those people know about privatizing public land? Honestly, sir, we just did it for fun. We're gonna need $45 billion. It's that militia we trained and gave all those weapons to. Repeat after me, man. An election cannot be free if we do not control it. It's not as simple as hanging it up. These people believe in multiple gods. When you're out there, I want you to think about who's gonna take care of you when you get back home. Honestly, it will not be the United States government. Mr. President, there's one less public school in Yemen. You've got a parade to attend. She's a freaky young gal, a bisexual, but a hustler though, and a sale some snow. With that juicy fan bang, I can't let you. Loved ones, let me tell y'all something. Uh, stop assuming that all wheelchair users want to walk again. That's not the case. I know you weren't really ready for that, but it's the truth. There's a lot of people in the wheelchair community who have loved their life as a wheelchair user. One, because they don't know life outside of it. And two, they have learned to accept that their new journey involves a wheelchair. That's it. And just because they may not want to strive to walk again doesn't make them less ambitious. It doesn't make them settling for their life and oh, you need to try harder and do better. You should want to walk again. Why? Because there's people that are walking that aren't happy with their life. There's people that walk that are terrible human beings to other human beings. 
Walking has nothing to do with your quality as a person. So stop assuming that all wheelchair users want to have that benefit again. Because there's many who don't. And there's many who are okay without it. And for the those and for those who do want it, great for you too. Please strive for the goal that you want in life. I just want people to understand to stop assuming that we all want that. All right? Stop it. Because what they say, when, when you make an assumption, you don't make an ass out of you or me something. Just stop being ass. All right, peace.